Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CS News. As always, every story today will be time marked down below and thank you all for the great support on my last few videos. We have now been constantly breaking 700 likes and over 400 comments. So thank you all very much. Please leave a comment down below and I'll try to reply to all of you guys. But more importantly, our first drama story in a long time, guys. I do want to talk about good old Skin Freak because I realized a couple days ago he did finally come back to CSGO videos and I want your opinion on this topic because Skin Freak is no longer Skin Freak. He's actually become Rich Rose, the legend himself. If you have forgotten, guys, we actually had McSkillet himself call this guy out for allegedly actually stealing his video ideas and uploading them himself on his own channel for his own personal gain. And all of a sudden, we had Rich Rose or, or Skin Freak start uploading non-CSGO content. A lot of them were just a lot of videos I would never watch. I'll show you guys screenshots on screen of that. And McSkillet eventually took down his video because he said the conflict was resolved. Now, I kind of just want to talk about where Skin Freak is today. He is now still Rich Rose. He actually came out with a CSGO video a couple days ago. So I want your feedback back on this. We had other videos out there as well alleging him of actually owning a gambling website. Will he stay in CSGO? Is he back for the money? That's the real question here guys, but this is still the Skin Freak, but if you see Rich Rose, it's still Skin Freak, the guy who actually stole many video ideas out there, and I'm just curious to see why he actually came back to CSGO out of nowhere when he tried to rebrand his channel, but he does seem to be back as of right now. Now besides that drama, I do want to talk about a bigger story as well. I've actually talked to Loop myself, if you guys remember, the blind and deaf streamer who had a lot of hype going around him a couple months ago. He still gets a lot, of, a good number of viewers on CSGO on his Twitch channel, which I'll link down below for all of you, along with his Twitter if you guys want to support him. I did talk to him because you guys remember this tweet from Envious a long time ago where they promised him a contract to stream with them, and apparently, according to him, quote unquote, I don't want to ruin any offers he has here, so I'm not going to go too in depth. I don't want to say anything that kind of kind of wrongs his situation, but he did tell me, quote unquote, that he is streaming with Envious right now, but he is yet to be offered a contract. Now, kind of weird because with a with a stipulation like that, it seems weird that he is he's streaming with Envious, but I can tell you guys he is not signed with them. So it's kind of just a, a sketchy thing here. It really kind of makes me angry. Now I realize he probably has a very good situation with them. I'm sure they are somehow compensating him in some way. I, at least I do hope. And he's doing pretty well still viewership wise. And you guys are donating and subscribing to him. But the fact that Envious has yet to sign with him, yet they were so public about doing that, even when he actually he tweeted out again once more to actually reach out to Envious to make sure there was a contract still there and they replied to him publicly saying yes you know message us DM us we'll get that through and they have yet to sign the guy it just makes me feel kind of scummy towards that envious organization and makes me wonder what's really going on there now even more importantly as well we have another potential leak here. Stewie2k, kind of notorious on stream for, for leaking these things. They're really not to be taken seriously. And it seems this might be a troll, but they did have this clip between Tark and him who were pugging together. And uh, here is what was said, if you guys can catch it. Yeah, more okay, is that why you're picking a finesse? Is that why you're picking a finesse? Or? Well, he's also brown. It's Another factor. Uh, now I understand this might be a troll. I honestly will not believe it until I see it. But FNS was one of those future players uh, a long time ago that actually was rumored to possibly be going to Optic. Now when they were actually trialing Jason R and Hayes was on their team as a part-time coach as well before before he took over for Jason R as their IGL and now the IGL is Tarek. That's confusing to follow, isn't it? it? He actually was a rumor because FNS could have joined them to fill that IGL role and he was one of those potential players out there. It would also be ironic because as of right now the Optic roster already has three former CLG members, Tarek being the first. Alongside that, of course, we have their current trial member coach. That's I'm a pet. And of course, Hayes was their their previous captain as well. So it'd be really ironic if FNS did join Optic and replace one of the CLG guys. Mainly, I think Hayes would be your target because he's no longer even the in-game leader for that team. And that's why they initially picked him up. But on top of that, it could obviously be a troll. But we have more information that Mixwell does want to go to Europe. So I'll play you guys a short clip of that. But it seems very likely we've had this, this problem in the past and it was already kind of a a known factor that he did want to go back to his home. He was a little homesick early on in Optic. They were making him feel as much as home as possible. And while they were successful in late 2016, it was easier for the guy. But certainly now that they've gone months and months without a big tournament win or a big tournament finish, he could be feeling differently and feeling like he deserves a different team. And I would have to say if Mixwell does leave this lineup and maybe FNS or someone else out there, maybe Pimp, joins the roster, I think Optic Gaming's chances at anything in the future would decline heavily. Although he's only their secondary offer, their primary opting role is switching around constantly. I think he is the glue to this team. Although they have very talented players, if Mixwell leaves, that leaves them with only three solid core players and a team cannot survive with that. So leave a comment down below what you guys think and here's what Mixwell had to say. Before you change to the Optic Gaming, you play with G-Bots. 
Yeah. Do you have in this time offers from another teams? Yeah, I had offers almost every every three months. There's offers, and I, I always said no. But I would like to go back to Europe soon because I miss my family and that stuff. But. And in very predictable news, you guys knew this was going to happen. We have North officially benching Magic. We it, I talked about this a couple days ago. It's just a really confusing situation when a player takes a break. Although on his Instagram he said he was still playing CS:GO. No CS:GO pro player takes a vacation and still plays CS:GO. I think that's not really how it should be. I told you guys my issues with that, and they have officially benched him, and he's looking for other offers out there. It seems as of right now, Valde from Heroic will replace him on North, and maybe even Magisboy will actually jump back down to Heroic. Kind of a downgrade there for him. But if they want him and they're going to pay him, I think that'd be the likely trade there. Although other teams out there certainly will have interest in this guy because he definitely was one of their better players. So Magisboy is officially benched and looking for other offers. On top of that, I want to talk about very briefly our next CS:GO major has been scheduled for early 2018, probably January or February, and our current lineup of, of organizers right now could be this list on I guess on the, I'll just tell them, say them right now: ESL, E League, PGL, DreamHack, even Starladder, maybe even MLG, and we can actually probably take PGL off that list. I can I can judge based on the production value of our last major, and them having back-to-back -back majors is very very slim. And I would love to see E League come back because their production value for season one and two has been amazing, as well as their Atlanta major was pretty solid as well. I would also like DreamHack though because their stickers could be awesome. So leave a comment down below what you guys want for the next major organizer. Although this won't influence anything, it'll be cool to see what you guys think. We also though had a Dota 2 tweet come out about this and they've already listed their next 11 majors. Now this is actually a huge announcement. I know it's CSGO news. This affects us though because JW tweeted, replied to it with this saying jealous. He actually clarified he was not jealous of the amount of majors. He was jealous of the organized, you know, they actually know when a major is going to be. The fact they laid out the next 11 majors, the exact dates to prepare for those majors is great. But here's a big announcement because Dota 2 is used to only having one international event each year, although it's like a $20 million event. Usually the first team uh, to place first there actually brings home just shy of $10 million. This year in 2017 will be over $10 million. So that's pretty insane. But 11 majors in two years? I'm not Dota 2 news here, guys, but I would hate that. That would be insane. I love CSGO as of right now. Although we're not crowdfunded yet, I think that'd be a great step. Maybe in the future, we'll see how that works out. Having two majors a year is the way it should be because we already have so many tournaments. And very lastly, we can now confirm with the latest update to CSGO. They updated a couple maps, one of them being Inferno. And yes, it does seem Doja got his own form of a graffiti. They're calling it a graffiti, yet it's not like the other ones we've seen in the past. It actually was this sign on screen, and that does translate into no, you cannot run now. His legend. Uh, it was actually in the finals versus Immortals on Inferno. You guys saw it. His nade that ended up getting two kills in that in that crucial round that caused an eco for Immortals. So really cool sign there. I think it's nice they went away from the graffiti and actually to a poster here. Very unique. And I'm surprised they picked Doja over people like Zeus or Adren who also had some miraculous pays there. So that was last in today's episode of CSK News. I have a lot of great stories coming tomorrow though. Probably even better stories than we heard today. So I'll hopefully have you guys all there. And please leave a comment down below on today's episode. I have all day to reply to comments. I kind of missed out yesterday a lot because I decided to live stream and I'm not going to do a yelling outro because I'm going to lose my voice because I've been talking way too much. So I will see you guys all tomorrow with more CS Good News and another live stream. Thank you all for the amazing support. You guys are all awesome. And uh, yeah, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. Goodbye. Some noise, but not enough. Oh, are you, are you kidding?